Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, they've put these nutcases in the field. Yeah, I don't want to mess with them. Not him, anyway. Look at them horns. There's loads of them. They look tasty, but dangerous. I think we're going to do our best to avoid these. Top field as well. This is the first one we come to when we arrive. Anyway, steady on you boys. Don't want no trouble, pal. Fortunately. Oh, we have got a couple on the path. Am I going to be able to get past him without him charging me? I think we'll be fine. They look relatively friendly. Apart from them horns though, they don't. Ah, we're golden. Quick boys, run. So the cows are sharing. Dead. The sheep. By the looks of things. They've all got up and they're buggering off, bless them. These look like a mixture of Hebrideans. And I'm not sure what the white ones are, but I used to work with the Hebridean sheep, believe it or not. Back in the day. Anyway, we'll leave them to it. Don't want to disturb their morning. I'm not sure what's going on this morning. We've got some huge like lumps of foam. Chance, don't drink it, mate. It might be uh might be a little bit polluted this morning. Who knows what's caused that? Could be organic. It doesn't look nice, does it? I don't want to fear boring you all with more control panel builds because that is basically what I'm doing today. I've spent quite a bit of time, well, laid on my back for want of a better word because I've been uh, under here putting all the heat pads on. You can see where they're patched on, they look spot on. We've got the um, got these on the uh, <laughs> these on the other tanks as well. I'm tripping over my words a little bit there. Um, that one's got cold beer in it at the minute though, so we're just going to wait until the tank's warmed up a bit because it's covered in condensation, and you know I want the glue to to stick, of course. And then I've got to wire these up. Gemma's doing a bit of casking, and we've just had a delivery. So I thought I'd better include it in the vlog. So it's from Gary, who came across on the Brewtubers meet the other week. And I was talking to him about, well, varnishing the tanks for start and then varnishing some timber floor in the pub. And, well, it's what he does. So he's very kindly sent me a container of this varnish that he uses, swears by it. And a note as well. I'll not read it all out, but telling me how I should use it and uh, everything else. And then he's also kindly supplied some rollers for application and some sanding discs. And uh, best of all, some home brews. So this is an alt beer clone. That looks very interesting. I've actually been and drank alt beer in Dusseldorf. This is a Kolsch and this one is a home brewed dark mild. Well I look forward to getting stuck into them. Thanks a lot Gary. It was great to meet you. Welcome along to the vlog ladies and gentlemen. So uh, that little clip that you saw of me crossing the river, I did that this morning, but that clip was from yesterday, so I thought I'd not bore you with two uh, Ford crossings. And the reason why I didn't film yesterday was because I got so caught up in doing other tasks, mainly finishing off the three control panels on that set of fermenters up there. I'll not bore you with that. Then Gemma started labelling, and then I thought, I've got to brew today. So today we, we have, indeed, brewed. But I thought it would be clever of me to add another tier to the heated pass. Uh, by the way, here is 
uh, a stainless steel shelf, of which one half is now a stainless steel heated pass. And uh, that took up all the day today as well, because I had to get it finished before Tom opened the kitchen. So there was going to be no vlog, but I couldn't let that happen for two days in a row. So I've decided to break out the camera and do a little cheeky tyre change. So you remember we uh, salvaged the running barrow the other day. And, uh, well, I got a wheel off of it. So I replaced a wheel that looked burst on my barrow with that. That was the wheel that came off the old running barrow. This one's the wheel that was originally on this red one. And obviously, it's uh, seen better days. So we're going to change them. We're going to change them for some puncture-proof wheels. So these are solid uh, polypropylene, I think, or polyurethane, one of the two. So I also ordered some cotter pins, but they haven't turned up. So we're just going to use the one that are, ones that are in it for now. And uh, I'll switch over to the Canon, and you can have a look at how these actually come off. So before we get into the thick of it, I just want to say one thing to everybody out there on the YouTubes. This year, again, Harrison's Brewery and the Brew Shed Retford have been nominated for uh, North Knots Business Awards. And the only way we're going to win it is if you guys go and vote for us. So I'm going to beg you now to go and do it. And the link's down below. You may as well do it now because I'm going to bother you every single vlog until you actually do it. So you may as well do it now and then you'll shut me up a lot quicker. The links are down below in the description. We are up for Best Hospitality Award for the Brew Shed. Please, please, please vote for that. And then we have Best Artisan Producer for the Brewery. They're both equally as important as each other. So follow the links, put the votes in, let me know you've done it in the comments and I'll shut up about it. Right, let's have a look at this. So this tire, isn't overly inflated by the way although you might say totally is but now it's within its rated pressure it says maximum 30 psi I put about 18 in it so it obviously was not happy because the edge of the tire had got a little nick in there like a little split so these have been run backwards and forwards from here to the pub, excuse me. Oh, it's not going to do it. Because Stuart takes the cast beers around and cake beers around on this. There we go, look. there's not a lot of pressure. It's not very loud at all, is it, that? But the uh, tread on these tyres is really quite on the skinny side. And the path between the brewery and the pub is not in the best of condition. Right, so in here we've got what's known as a cotter pin. A cotter pin. So if we have a little zoom in, you'll be able to see the cotter pin. And what we need to do with this cotter pin is straighten it out. It's not been put incorrectly. But yeah, we'll straighten it out so we can remove it like so. And then there's a couple of washers in here. That's just basically to take up any slackeroo. Let's just get that in the frame a bit better. So if I pull that off, that's all there is to it. So the bearings are actually captive within the hub themselves. So along comes a brand new one. Stiff bearings, but they'll be fine. Let's slide it on, make sure we've got the depth. Oh, we do. We're not going to be putting much of a washer on this time, though, because there isn't that much space. And unfortunately, the cotter pins that I ordered off Amazon at the same time have not arrived at the same time. Unless they're up in the pub. It's probably worth me going to have a look, because it's always best practice to put a brand new pin into the tires, but that's all there is to it. So we'll do the second one. 
If I've got the new cock pins, then I'll come down and we'll change that. I'll just go and have a look. No, unfortunately, no pins, I'm afraid, fellas. So, uh, we're just going to have to recycle these ones. Which, you know, it's not end of the world, is it? This one's been put in properly, though. That other one was in bits. So, when you put a cotter pin in, the way it's meant to be done, and uh, you probably not see this very well, actually, because it's quite dark. That's the correct way of installing a cotter pin. Let's put some light on it. That's too bright. So, what they've done here is they've poked it through one side and in fact I put this one back in so it's alright saying they uh, this is the best way to do it anyway I find so I'll, I'll just get it out and I'll show you show you what was done there we go so you take your pin and you basically there we go, so you take your pin and you fold it in half like this and then when you shove it through the little hole in the middle you open up these two ends and wrap them around the shaft sailor and then they are neat and out of the way and they prevent the they prevent the wheels slipping off basically but I don't think that light's helping at all is it? So. Uh, that's just, maybe if I just tone it down it might help a touch. So again, we'll just slide this bad boy off. There's a washer in there. Just the one this time. So we'll pop that there. And then we'll get our other wheel. And we'll slip him on the shaft. Sailor. There we go. So yeah actually really quite tight to get that washer in there I'm just wondering if we need to just settle that bear in a touch looks a bit on the high side compared to the other one so I'm just going to take a, a peening hammer over here in the distance I'm just going to peen these bearings in just a touch. Now that should... No, it's still tight. I don't think we're going to get space to put that washer in. So we'll go straight in with a pin and we have to make sure then now that we don't have a washer in the way that the pin doesn't foul any part of the wheel otherwise it's just going to wear it, wear it away as the wheels rotating. Yeah, he doesn't want to go in. Sometimes some people will fold these pins around and they'll snip them off if they look a little bit kind of in the way. But I think we can safely stick these two fellas around the side without any problem. There's one, and there's the other, but seeing as these are the old pins, I will change them out when the new ones arrive. But there we are. It's just so simple. Running barra! Now that's one hell of a jazzy barra, if you ask me. Let's take it down the... Oh, I'll move the tripod out of the way first. Let's take it down the brewery. Let's we'll see what Stuart thinks about this when he gets in. Oh, it feels a lot more controllable with the solid wheels. When you're carrying a lot of weight sometimes on these sack barrows with pneumatic tyres, it can be a bit of a pain in the arse. Because they uh, don't take a lot of pressure, you see, so they, they always squidge. Now, while I've got your attention, and to give you a little bit more uh, interest in the vlog these are some second-hand barrels that we've got they are like containers that they ship grain and all that kinds of shit in I don't know olives that was a thing olives well this is what we're going to use for our oil filtering system 
when we come round to building the log burner these are going to live outside in the backyard and we're going to filter oil so we can use it in an oil burning oil burner oh, yes an oil burning oil burner no less and I also started the um, rack project but I've run out of goddamn steel so I thought what I'll do is a nice video where I've pretty much got all the steel cut and you can just watch me do one or two cuts and then the rest of it will be an assembly video and I've run out of 2x2 stock and uh, I had a look on the steel supplies the other day you're not gonna believe this so the one that comes to mind was 25 mil by 25 mil by three millimeter thick angle iron in stainless steel yeah we bought a 6.1 meter length or well, we bought several of them but for a 6.1 meter length when I built the brewery in 2018 it was 45 pounds a length last night I had a look it's 93 pounds more than doubled ladies and gents so we may be putting the new brewery build on hold a little bit until the price of steel comes down because that's ridiculously high but that's it i'm going to make this one short and sweet we've done something practical we've walked the dogs and of course i've requested that you go across to the links below and vote for us in the North Knots Business Awards. We really, really need to win it this year, so we need your help. Here's, uh, well, I wanna say last year's. It wasn't actually last year's. It was uh, 2020, but of course, the presentation was delayed until last year because of COVID. So we want to do it back to back. That would be great, so please help us out. And while you're down there, you may as well take a little peek at the shop. We've got, bacon gesture back in stock um, but if you want to hold out and get some of the five pints and some of the Rillo the planet Amarillo then you might just want to wait a week or two till we've stuck some labels on them they wanted a little bit more conditioning uh, to carbonate and we've been waiting really for some warm weather so we don't have to put a heater in a cold room and turn it into a warm room and it's 22 degrees in here today so that's kind of perfect isn't it so yes they are going to be ready to go very shortly hold on can't see myself there we go oh anyway stop rabbiting on see you later folks please follow the links and vote and i will see you on the next one cheers